السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His companions, his household May Allah bless them, bless every one of us Grant us goodness and give us the best of homes and families May Allah سبحانه وتعالى grant solution to those who are looking for solutions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant ease to those who are struggling with any form of difficulty, be it in the family unit or outside of that family unit, in whatever way it may be. May Allah grant cure to those who are sick and ill. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon those who have passed on. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, that wa alaykum as salam when I first got up here was very, very encouraging. One of the reasons why I'm here at ELM, mashallah. When we speak, people respond. And that's very good for the speaker. Because at least you don't feel like you're just speaking to a wall, mashallah. But rather, you're speaking to brothers and sisters who love each other for the sake of Allah. I feel the love, mashallah. And I felt it. There were brothers here saying, can I take a picture and can I not take a picture and so on. Can I greet and can I shake and can I hug, etc. My brothers and sisters, that is not always possible, number one. Number two is, that's not going to get you any closer to Jannatul Firdaus. I'm sure you know that. I always say, you take a picture with any sheikh or anyone, you cannot show an angel that and say, listen, have a picture with this guy, you got to let me through here, you know. <laughs> not at all. But, mashallah, there is, to a certain extent, excitement amongst people sometimes. If you'd like, the most intelligent of the lot are those who sit where they are, turn around and take that selfie from where they are seated. And they don't need to ask anyone about anything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Similarly, I heard one brother saying, I'd like to be like you. And someone sometimes say, I'd like to, my children to be like you. And I say, you're aiming very low. You've got to aim much higher than a guy like me. A guy like me, subhanallah, you got to aim higher for the Sahaba radiallahu anhum and the likes, the true heroes are those who've passed on and their record is already, subhanallah, for us to see the companions of the Prophet sallallahu were chosen by Allah Almighty himself. Anyway, the topic this evening is towards a happy family, mashallah. We're searching for happiness, for contentment, for goodness, for success. Guess who is the owner of all those? Who is the owner of all those? Allah. Allah. So if you'd like all of that, primarily you start off by knocking the right door. If you happen to search for happiness, goodness, contentment, success, money. Who doesn't want money? Everyone wants money, right? Who wants money? Put up your hand. MashaAllah. Those who don't, come hand it over here. ELM needs it, MashaAllah. ELM needs it. Barakallah feekum. They are doing some good work. Alhamdulillah. So everyone wants wealth, everyone wants success, everyone wants good health, everyone wants everything nice. All those nice things, the owner of them is Allah. Develop your relationship with Allah. Develop your relationship with the word of Allah. It's the first step to your success. And it's the first step towards a happy family. You need to develop a relationship with Allah. So what happens? I'm always inspired by a specific hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, I mentioned it in this masjid and I'm going to repeat it again today. So, that beautiful narration is where the Prophet ﷺ tells us something after he was asked a question by his companions. They asked him a question, very powerful question. Before I get to the question, what's your aim? What's my aim? Ultimately, where do we want to reach? Can you tell me? Jannatul Firdaus. It means paradise. Ultimately, I want to reach paradise. I, I tell you something. Moments ago, I was in North London. I wanted to reach this masjid. What did I do? What do you think I did? I was driving, by the way. What do you think I did? Do I know London? GPS. The brother says GPS. He is 100% spot on. It's called Tom. Tom. But there's a lady speaking. I don't know. <laughs> Confusing, right? My brothers and sisters, that's exactly what I did. East, as soon as I said East London, one of the first drop downs was East London Mosque. Wow, it goes to show how many people actually come to the masjid. It's a good thing. The first drop down is East London Mosque. And I clicked on it and it started showing me, right? 
When I missed one turn, it showed me what to do. You need to do this and now go back and come back onto this road. You know why? I'm trying to get somewhere. I made a little mistake. Perhaps we were talking, it was quite busy, the traffic was a lot at this time of the day. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, we have something more serious than a navigation system that will take you straight to your ultimate goal, which you all said is paradise. And that is the word of Allah. Allah tells you, turn left, you turn left. You turn right, you turn right. Go straight, you go straight. Stop, you stop. Go back, you go back. Make a U-turn, you make a U-turn. But the problem is, we don't turn on that GPS. The GPS is such that it actually tells you speed trap ahead. Wow, subhanallah. You know what's going on. You want that happiness. There is a tom-tom showing you the happiness. In fact, we cannot even call it a tom-tom. We need to call it words of guidance. There is a direction straight. It will lead you to a specific goal. And you know that. But the problem is, you know, we're too engrossed in the world. Let me tell you, there is a balance between this dunya and the akhirah. This worldly life and the hereafter. There is a beautiful balance. Those who tell you to divorce yourself from this world have not understood the world. And those who tell you to enjoy it to the degree that you've forgotten where you're going to go have also not understood the reality of the world. Allah says when he speaks about a dua, a prayer, a supplication that is to be made. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا كَسَبُوا وَاللَّهُ سَرِيعُ الْحِسَابِ from among the people, they are those whom when they call out to Allah, they strike the balance between this life and the next life. So they say, oh our Lord, grant us goodness in this world. That's the beginning of the dua. Amazing, you know, man is such that we want the goodness of this world first. And Allah says, we will give you the goodness of this world. We will give you the goodness of this world. Not necessarily what you think is your goodness. I was speaking to some brothers today. And I want to ask all of you within yourselves to look within yourselves and see. Do you know that if sometimes if the plan you had for your own life was granted exactly as you wanted it, perhaps you would not have seen the, the successes that you have seen as a result of doors being closed by Allah for you. You need to be happy. Where are you today? Sometimes you're sitting, you've got your own business and you're doing well. But you were fired from a job just three years ago. Subhanallah. That was not firing. That was Allah closing the door to say, I think you can do better on your own. Subhanallah. And we got depressed. I lost the job. Allah says, why are you getting depressed? Pick up the pieces. It was not in your hands or it might have been to a small degree according to our allowance. And you know what? That would be something positive. The affairs of a true believer are amazing. They can never be negative. They are always good. When something happens your way, say Alhamdulillah. When it doesn't happen your way, say Alhamdulillah twice because it's happened the way Allah wanted it anyway. It's amazing. Don't become despondent. I was saying we're searching for Jannatul Firdaus. The owner of the Jannah is Allah. He's shown us the path, but we're not prepared to turn it on. Why? We haven't yet read the Quran with its meaning. We haven't yet understood it. We haven't bothered to put it into practice. We haven't bothered to become good people. Now let's get back to that hadith I was saying, one of my favorite. So the Prophet ﷺ was asked, what are the characteristics of those who are in Jannah, those in paradise? What would be the reasons that got them into paradise? Wouldn't you like to know that? A person who won a match or a race or an examination, a person who passed with flying colors, and if you needed to get to that position, wouldn't you like to have a meeting with them to say, how did you get to where you've got to? Please let me know. And then they'll tell you, I did this, I did this, and I did this. You have to do that. Because if you're looking at someone as a role model, someone somewhere you want to be, you need to know what they did to get there so that you can actually get there too. The people of Jannah, in Jannah, I want to know how did they get there? Why? Because I want to do that. So do you think the Prophet ﷺ gave a long lecture? 
And he told them, because getting Jannah is my main goal and yours, getting paradise. Did he give them a long lecture? No, he just said two words. Two words. Do you know what they were? Taqwallahi wa husnul khuluqi. Chapter closed and hadith ended. You need two things. The people of Jannah have two qualities, main, predominant. What are they? The consciousness of Allah, meaning the relationship with Allah. And secondly, greatness in character and conduct, meaning the relationship with the rest of the creatures of the same Allah. We've always spoken about this. So if you want paradise, work on yourself. Work on your relationship with Allah. That's the key to start it. And you will get happiness in this world because when you realize that everything happens according to Allah and when he's given you the capacity to do something, the energy, the mental ability, the intellect, the, the opportunities, seize them, make use of them. Don't be lazy. Don't sit back and say, well, if Allah wants, it will happen. Allah gave you the capacity. Allah gave you everything. You needed to get up to do it and Allah would have opened the doors for you. But because you didn't, the doors remained closed. <clears throat> Imagine you want to marry someone and you just look at them every day and smile. I mean, what's going to happen? <laughs> Subhanallah. You've got to do something. Open your mouth. Go and see the father. Go and see someone else. Go and do something about it within your capacity. If after you've done everything about it, the doors were all closed and everything was closed and even the big black gate in the front became closed. Then you know what? You got to say Allah didn't want it and walk away. Never mind. Perhaps Allah will bless you with children better than the children you would have had had you gotten that in a way that these may see greater success than those. Who knows? Who knows? Only Allah knows. Do you know the future? The answer is no. Allah knows. So be happy. Just do your best and leave the rest in the hands of Allah. No matter what.